Hi folks, Eric from Another Voice with Jason and Eric. Heard Mondays at 1 o'clock on WOLT Spin FM 103.3 in Greenville, Greer, and Spartanburg. And you can follow us on canigetawordin.com. Uh, you can hear our podcast there as well as find other information. And while you're surfing the web, make sure you stop by pdoutfitter.com. They're your source for self-defense firearms, uh, emergency preparedness and survival gear, as well as Edu education classes for responsible gun ownership. That's pdoutfitter.com. Now, this past Monday on the show, I ran out of time. I, for some reason, had not counted the breaks right. So, right as I'm getting to launch into this subject of line item veto, it's time to close the show out. So, I thought I'd talk about it today here. Um, I have maintained for quite a few years now that the president, whoever he may be, needs the line item veto. Most states, the governors, have a line item veto. We know that here as we discussed Governor Haley's 81 vetoes on the budget alone. The line item veto basically allows the president or the governor or whoever to, when they get a bill, to, to take out a line to say, I'm going to veto this line. Now, Congress still has the opportunity to override that veto. I'm going to give you an example, a current today example of why this needs to, be, that needs to happen. The Congress passed a bill, H.R. 1627, called the Honoring America's Veterans and Caring for Camp Lejeune Families Act. Now, this is a good law in general. It started out to address a serious problem with our servicemen and, and their families that had been stationed at Camp Lejeune from 1957 to 1987. During that time period, they were subject to contaminated tap water, and many people developed cancer and other diseases. And if there were questions about was it from off-base, on-base sources, was there you know things hidden about it? Did they try to cover it up? But the bottom line is this law was, bill was designed to help those families. And that's a great thing. They need to do that. And then, as happens in Congress all the time, it expanded to other things. This bill included really good things like help for homeless vets, uh, assistance in, in getting the benefits that the veterans are supposed to have to them, education, health care, all due to do with the men and women who sacrifice themselves for our defense. So this bill is really good. The problem is, included in this was a section to deal with a problem at military funerals, namely the Westboro Baptist people. As you are aware, these folks go to military funerals and they raise all kinds of sand. They speak vile and, and hateful things, not even directed, not because the soldiers did anything wrong, and not about war, but about their hatred of homosexuality and how they're blaming, you know, how they do this. And it's a terrible thing. Well, the government decided to step in and do something. So they now have this bill, which now is in the law because President Obama signed it yesterday. The bill require, restricts protests at military funerals two hours before till two hours after they have to be 300 yards away. Now, that seems like a good thing in the sense of, yeah, let's not interrupt these families. The problem is it's a, it is an infringement. It's a restriction on constitutionally protected rights, the right to the freedom of speech and the freedom of assembly. Now, no right is absolute. So there are restrictions that the government can do. But when they do it, it has to be thoughtful. It has to be a process, slow process. It should hesitate to do it. And most importantly, there must be a compelling need that the restriction can only solve. And that doesn't fit in this case. In my opinion, the American people have said no. You don't get to do that. You don't get to dishonor the memory of men and women who give their all for our country. You don't get to disturb the families. And what do I mean by that? I went to Private Whitmire's funeral in Simpsonville a while back. Folks, Westboro could get nowhere near the church, nowhere near the family. There were thousands of people. I went to one in Easley just recently. Hundreds of people came out. I heard of a story of a, of a town where the city gave a section for the protesters to protest in, and a local uh, hardware store 
donated paint, supplies to build a fence, and they built a huge fence and painted the American flag on it between those Westboro people and the family, and they couldn't get anywhere. Was it Auburn or Oklahoma, where the red line, where the college students all stood in the line wearing their red shirts? The American people spoke. We deal. We are dealing with this Westboro folks, and we don't need the government to infringe on our rights a little bit in order to deal with that. Now, President Obama had a choice to make. Because he doesn't have the line item veto, he had to either veto a very good bill that affected positively many people, or he could have rejected it because of that. He signed it yesterday, and I think he should have. But if he had had the line item veto, that could be taken out. Let me give you another example. The National Defense Authorization Act of 2012. Overall, it was a good law. Except, they stuck in there this indefinite detention. Sign it or not sign it. If you had the line item veto, that could have been taken out. Now, I know people are saying, well, you're going to take things away from Congress. You're not. Congress has the ability to override the veto. As we saw here in South Carolina, when Governor Haley vetoed 81 parts of the budget, the, the, the State House went and overruled most of them. It can be done. Congress has a bad habit of either adding, adding things to bills that they know won't pass on their own, or, for political purposes, to make the president, whoever he may be, have to make a bad political decision and, gain, and get kind of grief on it. Giving the president the line item veto would kind of bring Congress in line eventually. I think after a few years of, con of presidents saying, no, you're not going to stick me in this political situation. I'm going to pass the bill and veto this section here that has nothing to do with the bill. So I'm encouraging you to talk to your senators and representatives and urge them to vote for a line item veto for the president. Now understand, you're going to be asking people who do this all the time to give up their right to do that or to give up to, to give someone else the right to say stop it but listen as much as they might be influenced by corporations and lobbyists they know that if they can't get back in office they don't get any benefits and if they can hear the voice of the people saying give the president this they will listen so I encourage you to do that and Try, let's try to make government work. All right, that's it for today. Make sure you go to canigetawordin.com and check out our stuff there. And go to smallknot.com slash another voice. That's where we're, run, we're doing the campaign to raise $1,500 to expand our presence online. And it's where you can have an active part in our show. You can invest, but you can also come online, come on the show and talk with the right kind of investment. That's smallknot.com slash another voice. Until next time.